-hmm. We're finished with the wives. Yeah. What is it that we should look for our sisters when they are looking for a husband? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. First of all, as we said, that the norm in all these societies, and maybe it is the closest way of life for the Islamic way of life, that the men are the people who go and ask for sisters. Okay, they actively search for potential wives. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, this gives women more respect and more honor. And it is in living beings in general. It is the male who it chases the female. However, we did say that sometimes some sisters or their wallies or their fathers might look for potential husbands. It happened that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great companion, the one with izza and might and strength and honor and from a very noble lineage, and he's the second person in al-Islam, and so on. Okay? When the Prophet sallallahu said, Umar, when you go through a path, the shaitan leaves that for you. And he leaves it from another way. Okay? This is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It happened that he himself was looking for his daughter Hafsa. You know? So it doesn't mean that it is a shameful procedure or shameful thing to do. No. Sometimes the wali should look for his girls, for his sisters, for his daughters and so on. The wali, the father, the brother. And... We will talk, inshallah, about how to propose and how to know about other potential spouses. So, for example, you know, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu himself was looking for a spouse for his daughter Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he went to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and said to him that I have a daughter Hafsa, are you interested to get married to her? He offered him. And then Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not say anything. Umar ibn al-Khattab was a bit upset. Now, this means that the brother can look for a potential spouse. So this has to be in mind. Now, what are the qualities of a potential husband? There are a number of qualities. Some of them are similar to the qualities that we spoke about, the qualities of potential wife. For example, the first one is deen. We all know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of At-Tirmidhi, when he said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوا إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا تَكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ If a man comes to you, proposing to your sister, daughter, and you are happy and satisfied with his deen and his character, then you should accept his proposal, Otherwise, a fitna and great destruction will become rampant on earth. So now here, the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about what? Deen and was speaking about khuluq, two important qualities. But if we notice in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man tardawna, the one whom you are happy with or satisfied with, with his deen and with his character. Now, why is this? Why the Prophet ﷺ left it to us, the deen and the character? Why? Does that mean that we set the standard or what? Obviously, it is not true that we set the standard. Mm -hmm. It is not true. But the issue is, as we said when we spoke about the wife, in many cases, the standard of the deen might go up, the standard of the deen might go down. I'll give you an example. In certain circumstances, certain times, the standard of the deen goes very low. Does that mean that we don't let our girls, sisters, daughters get, get married? Because we are not satisfied according to that standard of the deen. We are not satisfied with those husbands. I mean, if we do that, it, we might get to the stage where we will never accept anyone. 
and which happened with a number of people. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu went further. He went to Abu Bakr first. Abu Bakr, his friend, he was not so interested. So in one narration, he went to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Again, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was not so interested in marrying the daughter of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Again, Umar was a bit upset. Then he offered it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to Hafsa, the daughter of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Which means that it is absolutely fine that the man looks for a husband for his, his sister, for his Daughter. daughter. I suppose, and also, Sheikh, in some cases it might be obligatory for him to do it if he feels that his daughter might fall into haram, for example. This is true. This is true. In some circumstances, the only provision that is available for women to get married is through their wallets. Exactly. They are the people who should actively look for potential spouses for their daughters or their sisters. Anyway, so inshallah that is clear. Now what are the qualities? The first quality, as we said, the first quality that a man should have, as we said about a woman should have, is the deen. Religion, yeah. Religion. And that we quoted the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرَضَوْنَا دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُهُ If a man comes to you and you accept his deen, you accept his khuluq, then accept him to marry your daughter. If you don't do this, then there will be a great corruption or mischief. Fasadun fil ard. Yeah? Great mischief, great corruption, great evil things that might happen. I think this is something these days that is fairly common, where the man is rejected, not for a decent reason. Yes, yes. And that's why... We need to clarify those issues. See, we need, this is the main hadith that talks about the main qualities we should look for in mm -hmm. a husband, in a potential husband. But there are some other qualities, we will come to them, inshallah. Why I am saying this? Because many of the younger brothers and sisters, they might think that the proposing man is suitable in terms of deen, is suitable in terms of character, and that's why they just want to rush into a decision of acceptance without taking into consideration some other ahadith that talk about those equalities. Yeah? Inshallah. Inshallah, we'll talk about it. Inshallah, Inshallah, we will talk after the break. Please join us again, where we will continue talking about the qualities that a wife should look for in a potential husband. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way, it's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people. Well, good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in Peacemakers, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome brothers and sisters again to this episode where we shall continue talking about the important qualities when looking for a potential husband. 
Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We were just talking about one of the main qualities when looking for a husband, which is the religion, the deen. The deen. We all know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, the hadith of At-Tirmidhi. When he said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوا إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا تَكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ If a man comes to you, proposing to your sister, daughter, and you are happy and satisfied with his deen and his character, then you should accept his proposal. Otherwise, a fitna and great destruction will become rampant on earth. So now here, the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about what? Deen and was speaking about khuluq, two important qualities. Is there anything else that we've missed from the deen? Yeah, there are a number of things that we need to clarify about the deen. Yeah? As I said just before the break, that although we agree that this is the main hadith that talks about the qualities we should look for in a potential husband. Mm -hmm. But there are a number of other hadith, other factors that we need to look for in a potential husband. This is not the only hadith, mm -hmm. okay? This has to be clarified, as I said, because many young brothers and sisters, they just quote this hadith and they forget about any other hadith, any other statement by the Prophet wasallam <laughs> that describes what we can look for in a potential husband or what should we look for in a potential husband. Okay? Let me clarify more about the issue of the deen. First of all, the Prophet ﷺ said, the person you accept his deen. So he referred it to us that we accept his deen. We means mainly the parents and the custom at that time. Mm -hmm. So the Parents, based on their understanding of the deen, based on the context, okay, based on number of similar factors. Why do we say this? Because, Akhi, we have to remember that the standard of the deen varies from one place to another place, from one time to another time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? For example, if in certain circumstances, most of the men are involved in some maybe haram activities, such as shaving the beard. Mm -hmm. In some areas, shaving the beard is a no. Even the imams shave, the beard. They shave their beards. Okay? So, maybe it would be acceptable to accept a person who have fallen into this sin. In that place? In that place, in that context. Similarly, the situation of maybe other practices. I don't want to mention some practices that might maybe create some kind no of... No need to be too specific. Yeah, yeah, questions with regards to some cultures, because we know that this program is watched by a number of people from different countries, from different backgrounds. So the issue is, if you accept the deen of the person, just go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, from time to time, the standard of the deen go down or might go up. Mm. That should be taken into consideration. Now, see, the issue is the Prophet ﷺ did not consider the deen as the only criteria. He mentioned the khuluq, the khuluq, the character, the manners. We'll talk about it. Let me clarify more about the issue of the deen. And here, I would like to speak to my sisters to be careful when considering a potential husband based on his deen. Mm. Because many of the brothers, they are outwardly look religious. Mm -hmm. Inwardly, they are empty. Oh. Yes? My dear sisters, please, please, you need to put that into consideration. I always receive questions from sisters that they are telling me, Sheikh, we received a proposal from a good brother. He is upon the Sunnah. He is a student of knowledge. He studied in Medina University or in Al-Azhar or something like this. He is a religious man. I said to them, how did you know that he's a religious man? Exactly. Is it because he has grown his beard? Which happens naturally anyway. So. It happens naturally, but 
in certain circumstances, many brothers, they start to practice. And then they grow the beard. They start to wear maybe the Arabic clothes like these clothes. And then some sisters, out of ignorance, they consider them as the most religious people that they come across. They're seeing from what they see. You have to do your homework. Mm. Mainly her wali. Her wali should do the homework. And should they check the background of the person in order to check his deen. Exactly. And she is, of course, just as we mentioned that the man is choosing the mother of his children, she is also choosing the father of her children. Of her children. Okay. And see, I have to say, although I know that many sisters will not like this, said that sisters can be fooled easily. Mm. Sisters can be fooled easily. I came across a number of cases where sisters, practicing sisters, have been fooled by some brothers who presented themselves or portrayed themselves as practicing people. Mm. Wallahi, we have so many sad stories. One of the recent cases that I came across, a sister called me and she said she got married and she wants to know the validity of this marriage. I said, sister, what happened? She said, a student of knowledge that you, Sheikh, she said to me, that you know. A person that I know of. Okay. She said, this person, he studies with her in the college or in the university. And she said that he told her that, listen, according to many scholars, if people identify us as a married couple, then we are married. And this is a valid marriage. I said, what? What are you talking about, sister? And she said, yes, this is what happened. And then I told her, and then what? She said that he came to me once and he told me, see, everyone is talking about us as a married couple. So we are married. And he took me somewhere and had a sexual relationship with me. I said, subhanallah, are you serious about it? She said, well, why this what happened? I don't know. I'm asking you, is this a valid marriage? Is it true that some scholars do say that this is a valid marriage? I said, no way. No way. This is an example. But apart from this, I always receive this question. Sheikh, this brother, he is on the sunnah. He's a talib ilm. He studied somewhere and he wants to get married to her. Or I got married to him and then I found that he is a deceit. It was not the case that she thought it was from his appearance. Yes. One of the sad Recent cases that I came across, a sister was married. She came to ask for khula from the Islamic Sharia Council. Okay, sister, why you want to have khula from your husband? And we will see that khula yeah, is one way to end the marriage by the request of the wife. Okay, if the husband refuses to divorce her, she might ask him to divorce her in exchange of certain amount of money. I said to her, okay, why do you want khula from him? Or why do you want us to interfere to dissolve the marriage? She said, basically, this man deceived me. And I was foolish. Wallahi, she said that she's foolish. Mm -hmm. I said, how? She said, he proposed to me. And I saw that he's involved in some Islamic organization, da'wah activities. And then I accepted him. He's from a different culture. My parents were against me. I put pressure against them. I said to them that the Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't do it, if a person comes to you and you accept his deen and his character, then you should accept him. And if you don't do this, there will be corruption and mischief, etc., etc. So I forced them and I religiously blackmailed them. Yeah? She was doing religious blackmailing. Mm -hmm. Then she said, her father accepted, her mother never accepted him. She said, in a year's time, yeah, she became pregnant. Then she found that this person doesn't have a proper job. This person was married to minimum, minimum three ladies before. He divorced two of them. He had maybe 
number of children and she found that apart from all of this that this person is not a religious person she said that he spends most of his time browsing haram website haram websites imagine I said to her sister why didn't you just to check do your homework she said well he came across as a religious person this is a common problem perceptions can be deceiving problem a very common especially sisters can be easily Ooh. deceived we have so many stories of sisters that have been deceived by spouses from abroad from other countries and some sisters do travel to them and get married to them and i would like to take this opportunity to warn our sisters against this and that's why islam wants to support sisters and islam said that there is no marriage without the permission of the wali the right wali not a wali of your choice and we will speak about it this and i will mention more stories about some cases of deception mm. the conclusion is my dear sisters you have to be careful about the deen of the potential husband don't be deceived by the appearance do your homework and check whether this person has the deen what do we mean by deen that this person in general is a person who fears Allah inwardly as well as outwardly yes inwardly as well as outwardly and she receives testimonies from different people that this person is a god fearing person yeah. based on a long history they know of him yeah. subhanallah we're not saying to hire a private detective we're just saying to do the basic homework yeah the basic it checks yeah jazakallah khair sheikh we've run out of time now Inshallah, we will continue in the next episode talking about the qualities of the husband. Please join us next time when we continue to talk about the qualities of the husband and we will move on, inshallah, from the quality which is the deen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.